Hello and welcome to Secrets Mystery Manor. I'm your host, Psychic Zelda Kelly. Warning, this podcast may contain sensitive material. It is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer and listening discretion is advised. Hello and welcome. Welcome to Secrets Mystery Manor. I am your host, Zelda Kelly, and I have a different little show for you today. What I'd like to do is, since we're now in between Christmas and New Year, and this will be our last show for 2021, can you believe it? Where has the time gone? In many ways, I'm glad it's gone. I know you are too, right? Ugh, it's been a tough year for a lot of people. And we can get into predictions that I have for 2022 in another episode. But what I want to talk to you about tonight, and yes, I am recording late night. Ooh, so snuggle up. Get ready, get the popcorn, get your blankie, get your teddy bear, get close to the fire, keep warm, because we're going to feel a little tingle, and we might even have a little chuckle here and now. <laughs> Just like that, because I can't talk, you know that. But we may even have a little chuckle now and then. But tonight, I want to talk to you about my experiences with my own psychic readings. That's right. My own psychic readings that I've had in many years and my, ex and my experiences with that. And if you know me, I tend to lean toward the old school psychic people. And I think it's because I have taken so long and in my studies um, and I have a doctorate in metaphysical sciences uh, with, a, with a minor study in theology. I have studied, you name it, behavioral parapsychology, um, psychology, physics, quantum physics. And that's why I want to help you with the laws of attraction too. But that's also another episode. So without further ado... A, a deer. <laughs> it is Christmas, right? Merry Christmas, the reindeer. Without further ado, here we go. One of the most memorable, memorable times for me. It would be memorable if I could get through one of these episodes and could re <laughs> could really share with you with you without getting tongue t tied, just like now, and tongue twisted. You're sitting here with me. We're friends, right? So this is me. It's real. And I'm recording this live. So there you go. Well, how else would I be recording it, right? Okay. So one of the best readings that I'd ever had. And I have several readings, several people that I had read with. But I was dating a gentleman from Germany who had immigrated into the United States who was 20 years older than me. And at the time, that was really romantic. Right now, not so much. But at that time, so it's been a while ago. And so it was a lot of fun. And he took me around to a lot of psychics, and we went into Canada to where his own sister read playing cards for me and actually taught me a little saying that a lot of times if we have time, I say it. It's German. Forgive me for those who do speak it fluently. I'm going to say it, and hopefully I don't muddle it. Please give me credit for that. But anyway... Here's the saying when you lay out the playing card deck as a cartomancer in German. Was mich schreckt, was mich deckt, was mir zur Seite steht, was mir nicht in geht. 
Now what that means is what is near me, what is behind me, what is coming to me, what I can avoid, and it's just basically asking the cards to show you the direction and the path. I thought that was pretty cool. And after all these years, I mean, it's been a, like 30 years, I was able to remember that. And I picked up my pendulum skills with this gentleman. And it, it was really an experience. Um, I, I loved being together with him. We traveled all over. But the most memorable experiences that I had was going to Florida. And on A1A down on the East Coast, going toward Palm Springs, there was a lady down there that had a beautiful brick building. And she had a small sign up that said psychic. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to go, I want to go. Because I had just left Psychic Friends Network. And I was feeling a little lost. I just didn't know where my place was. I knew that chapter had ended and I was looking for this new chapter. So I said, oh, I want to go, I want to go. So we pull in and this building was so nice and there were a lot of people there. She had a waiting room and I guess she lived on the top two floors. There was a an elevator that she took. She was an older lady she had an elevator in this building. She owned the whole building on the bottom floors. It looked like the living room. It was a waiting room. She had sofas and chairs and all this. And then toward the back, she had two rooms, a desk and a chair. And she read the regular playing card so that she was also a cartomancer. And she was so very knowledgeable. Um, there was no way she knew some of the things that she had told me. For instance, when I walked into the waiting room and decided that I wanted to have a reading. Now, this was in 1990. And her readings then were $30. $40. So th th at that time, that was a, a little on the pricey side. And if she spent five minutes with you, she spent five minutes. If she spent five hours, she spent five hours. There was just no time limit. So we, I walked in, and out she comes. And I said, hello, I would love to have a reading with you. She took my hand, and she said, I've been waiting for you for so long. You are from so-and-so city, Ohio, aren't you? And I, I'm it, very much true. I mean, there was absolutely no way. I mean, my license plate said Florida. And there was no way that she knew this. So that was number one. So we went into her little, I guess, her, her little office there. And she was talking to me about different things and how I would not stay with this man how I would go back to my ex-husband, and that was very true, the Navy commander. She told me uh, where I was going to be living next. She told me that there was a lot of travel, and she told me that later in my e years, I would be pretty well known in the psychic circle. I guess I am. I don't feel like I am, but I guess I am. If you Google my name, I suppose I am. I've got about three or four pages there so I mean you know but it that it was just amazing some of the things and then <laughs> she um read for the boyfriend at the time and he came out with this funniest look on his face and I said what's going on he goes let's go to the car so we get in the car he looks at me and he says she tells me she, he was talking he said she tells me that she says, I know you have $200 in your pocket and I want it because I'm going to be telling you some things that nobody else will tell me. And I said, did she? And she said, he said, yes. And I gave her the $200. So I thought that was so funny. Now here's the funny part about her. 
I found out by some neighboring people, and she even told me on my second visit there, that Sprint, yes, Sprint, brought her into that area. Now, I don't know where she was from. Brought her to that area because what they wanted to do was bring the cables in for Internet. Now, isn't that amazing? And I didn't even know what that was. Nobody knew that what that was in the 90s, but they wanted to lay this cable and Internet and so forth. And they brought her in so she could help get this through with the local people. And they bought her that building and helped her get established. She was right on the waterfront, right there. A few years later, I went down and she was no longer there. So I presume that she passed away. I'm sure she's gone by now. But the funny thing was that I was able to get my grandmother, the card reader, and I went to her, she was living in Tennessee at the time, and I said, listen, you've got to go down there. You are not going to believe this. She is really, really something else. So, oh, pardon me, that's Shaggy. He is playing right now. So, it was funny because we pull up in the parking lot. Now, this lady, this psychic, has had a glass door in the front. It looked like a storefront, really. And it was a glass door, and she was standing there, and the sun was kind of shining. And we were sitting in the car. My grandmother looks over at me and whispers, you know, she should have a slip on. You could see right through her dress. And you could. <laughs> and my grandma was pretty finicky about that stuff. We walk inside. She looks at me and says, Hello, Zelda. How are you? And I said, Fine. I said, She said, And this is your grandmother, which my grandmother did not look like my grandmother. She might have looked like my mother, but she did not look like a grandmother. And she said, And this is your grandmother. And she looked right at her and said, Sass. Now, my grandmother's name was Frances. Her nickname with family was sass, as in S-A-S. She looked at her and said, Sass, the next time you come, I'll be glad to put a slip on for you. I almost fell on the floor. My grandmother cackled and laughed, and so did she. She loved the reading. They loved each other, and we did see her one more time after that. And then that was it. That was, my, that was my time there with her. But I just thought it was so interesting. She was one of the big, big ones that I'll never forget those readings with. And she did tell me a few things that are personal that I can't share, but they did come true. They didn't come true in the timing that she told me, but they did come true. A lot of it did. I wish she was still there. I would go to her. I can't even remember her name, and I have tried to look her up on the Internet, but she unfortunately is no longer there. But she was right around the Palm Coast area of Florida on Route A1A right there, and it was just, I, you couldn't miss her. She was right out there by the road. The other, one of the other times that I went to see a psychic reader was in Daytona Beach. Now, I just liked to really go to them. And because I always thought, well, if I've got something to learn, I want to learn it. Maybe I can, maybe I can, because I just, I read all the time and I've always had a thirst for knowledge for the psychic phenomenon and the paranormal and metaphysical science, quantum, you name it. And so I thought, well, I, I'm going to get another reading. And it was a storefront. It was open 24-7. And it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. Driving down the boulevard. She was on the beach side. And there was this building. And it was a storefront. And it was all glass. You could see in. And you walked in. And it was kind of these funny looking statues. Things. You know, things to kind of throw you off a little bit and make you think. Didn't bother me, but I noticed the decor. And it just kind of cracked me up a little bit because I knew it was all like theater, 
for a lot of people that went in there. Now, I always went in prepared to pay a particular price. But a lot of people will, it, like that, storefronts, will try to talk you out of more money. That's the, that's the, the, that's the gig. So, we, <laughs> we walk in. And there's nobody around. We're walking around this storefront. Kind of looked like a jewelry store, kind of. There were, there were glass cases with card decks and candles. And so, you know, had some pendulums and crystals and stones and little whatnots and, you know, the bits and kibbles that you could buy. And all of a sudden, because you could tell there was like a, a window, but you could tell that there was a two-way mirror. And all of a sudden, this woman comes out around, and she looks at me, and she said, what are you doing here? And now, I, that was not very welcoming. And I kind of turned around to see if <laughs> she was really talking to me or not. And I said, well, ma'am, I would like to have a reading, if you don't mind. And she said, how much are you willing to pay? Now, that was my first sign that, okay, this may not be the best reading that I'm going to get. And I said, well, I have $30. And she said, $30 is fine. What do you want to know? So I asked her, I said, I'd like to know where my career path is taking me. And she said, oh, you don't want to know about love? I said, no. No, I don't. I want to know about my career path. She looks at me again and she says, oh, but you should ask me about love. And I said, I don't think I really need to. And she said, yes, you do. You need to ask me about love. And I said, okay, you got me. What about love? First thing she says is, well, I'm just not so sure I can tell you. <laughs> I break out laughing. And I said, really, you're kidding me. And I said, why can't you tell me? And she was looking at this gentleman that I had been dating. And I asked him to leave the, just wait for me right outside the door. So I said, so what is that? And she said, Oh, she said, he is married, he has children, he's not the one for you. Now, I want you to know that I don't date married men. I do know for a fact that he was not married, and I know for even a bigger fact that he had never had any children. He was 50 years old, and he didn't want that in his life. And I said, yeah, okay. I said, what else do you have to tell me? So she pull, starts pulling out the tarot cards and telling me this and this and this. And I said, by this time, I thought, well, oh, I'm getting ripped off. And she's trying to scare me into something. Because she said a few things that, you know, would try to jerk my chain a little bit. And I said, eh, I don't think so. And so she pulls out the tarot. Now, I'm not a tarot reader, but I do know enough about the tarot reader to the or the tarot cards to be able to say, "Oh, that card means this, but in that position it means this, and if it's reversed, it means that." So she's pulling out these cards and she says, "Oh, no. Your career is taking a dive." And I said, "Are you sure that that card means that because I'm not so sure that card." Now, I listen, I don't advocate that. When a reader tells you something and you're the client, I believe that you need to listen to the reader because like with my cartomancy deck, some of my, some of my um, meanings are not by the book, so to speak. They are meanings that have come to me over the years that mean a specific thing if they're laying in a specific layout. So in all fairness, try not to tell a reader how to read. But I was getting ripped off and I knew it. And this girl was kind of like a, and I have to say it, forgive me, but she, she wanted me to know she was a gypsy. She, I mean, she really, she had this scarf thing tied around her head and the big hoop earrings and, you know, all we needed was a bonfire, right? And I mean... <laughs> No stereotyping here, but that's what she wanted me to think. So finally, she just looked at me and she said, give me your $30. And I, so I gave it to her and she said, okay, now get out. <laughs> it was kind of funny and a big experience. So anyway, 
So that was that was that particular and actually I was heading to to Orlando to a conference, a psychic conference that was down there for card readers and I just didn't think hardly anybody would be there and it was at the Peabody Hotel in Orlando and I'm going to tell you that place was absolutely packed. I could not believe it. I did some card readings for people. They had booths all over the place. Went to one seminar that they were talking about some mirror magic and at the time, I was a little braver then. At the time, we did these exercises that we would, I guess, gaze into the mirror. And you could see changes happening. Now, this, when you do that, and I, and I don't advocate that at all, and I'm telling you. And I don't have mirrors in my home, except for in the bathrooms. That's another thing. That's another episode. That's another questions, Because they can form portals. And whatever you do, never put mirrors across from each other because it creates a vortex. And if you walk through that, that can really affect you. Especially if you're an intuitive, if you have psychic ability, any of those things. Okay, back to the, back to the episode now so we don't get sidetracked. So I'm doing all this and I walk past... In, in these convention rooms and they had this one mirror out and as I walked past and I looked over I saw myself as an Egyptian now that yes I know what's going through your head walk like an Egyptian right so anyway I saw this and it scared me and I never did it again because I backed up and looked again and of course you know I looked like myself and there wasn't anything but I thought, I thought, okay, that's enough of that. Because you can actually take on another persona if you do that sort of thing. And I didn't, I just, that was, that's not my gig. And I don't want to do that. And I don't suggest any, you know. So anyway, they had a lot of different vendors and seminars and everything. So as I've told you before, I don't believe in reincarnation. I believe we get one chance at it. If we blow it, too bad. We, we're not on this wheel of fortune that we keep spinning around. Now, for those of you that believe it, that's fine. I respect you. Please respect me for my, for my belief. So we went into this, I guess, reincarnation little seminar. Now, this place was packed. They, it was like a big conference room had a stage up front. I bet there was 100 to 150 people, maybe even more in there. And they were talking about past lives and past life experiences. And at the time, I started reading a lot of Jess Stern. He was an author. I started reading a lot of his books, and I thought it was interesting. So not that I believed it. I just thought it was interesting. So we went there, and they were doing this hypnosis and all these things. And finally, there was one woman who raised her hand and said, I was Cleopatra. And people gasped, you know. Oh, they were, I don't know if they were impressed or shocked. So they were gasping, and she went on to tell this and this and this. <clears throat> so then, another lady jumps up on the other side and says, wait a minute, I was Cleopatra, and I knew this and this and this. Then a lady from the back jumps up and says, now hold on, I was Cleopatra, and this and this and this. And by the time, in about a 20-minute span, there were, I'd say, 15 17 Cleopatras in that room and everybody was snickering because they were taking this very seriously and they were going around and asking you know having people ask questions and that sort of thing and these people there were three of them that we just thought were going to come to blows I mean they were ready they were fighting words they I mean they were not going to give up the idea that they were Cleopatra and so finally I raised my hand 
And there was all this arguing, and the moderators were trying to shush the room and quiet everybody down and get everybody calm and everything else. And finally they came to me, and of course they handed me the microphone. I stood up and I said, I'll never forget this. It just got quiet. All eyes were on me, and I said, I don't know what there is to fight about. Because as far as I know, Cleopatra was something or someone not to brag about being. She was four foot eleven and weighed 165 pounds. She had sex with her brother, her uncles, and she killed many of her handmaidens and slaves to see what the best way was to commit suicide. If you want to fight and brag over the right of being Cleopatra, you go right ahead. This is not for me. I gathered my things and I left the room. <laughs> As I left, there were a few claps. I think there were some other people that were just tired of hearing that. So I just thought that was very, very interesting. These were, these were my experiences and so forth. So coming back, and at the time, I lived in Tennessee, and I had been doing some work in Florida, and I went down, and I actually went to school in Florida for a couple of years, and I was going down there and coming back, and I lived in St. Augustine, which is one of my favorite places in the whole world, did a few ghost hunts down there, read cards on a daily basis for people down there, went back to Tennessee, and I heard that there was a card reader in Tennessee. This lady was near, right outside of Knoxville, on a very treacherous road where many people got in accidents and were killed, and it was extremely hard to pull into her place and to get a reading with her. Parking was at a premium. Her little house was right along the road, but she was on Chapman Highway outside of Knoxville, Tennessee. She was bedridden. Um, she couldn't walk. But she read the playing cards. She was another cartomancer. I've always been drawn to the cartomancers. For me, I get more meaning and more card meanings out of the cartomancy readings and out of a cartomancer deck. That's not to say you can't with a tarot. I, the tarot was just never my gig. I have a tarot deck right now that is beautiful. Um, that we offer. And I love to look through that and, you know, look through, but, but I don't get that same feeling, intuition that I do with the playing cards. And maybe it's just because I've been doing that for 45 years, I don't know, but that's, that's it. So to you tarot card readers out there, kudos to you. I can't, I don't feel my talent is with tarot. Anyway, she was a cartomancer. So while you were in there, in her room, you walked into her front door, and there's a hospital bed that she was laying in. Now, at this time, remember, there were no cell phones, no internet. It was all landlines. And her phone was going continuously ring, 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 ring. She had it by her bed, and she would sit there and make her own appointments. Now, she did have someone in there helping her, and we would be all sitting around, and it would be like a little snake. Uh, you know, you, you, got a, you got a chair somewhere, and you would wind around, and you would sit there and wait. And the real uneasy part of this is that you heard her reading for other people. And she had this cackle laugh <laughs> that was unmistakable. I loved it. But if somebody would go in there and say that they were dating a married man, she would announce to the room, this lady is, re is dating a married man. And what do you think of that? You know you shouldn't be doing that. The cards were, you know, and she would go on and on. It was very uncomfortable. But you knew it was kind of a disclaimer. You, you knew when you walked in there, what you were what you were going to get and if she decided she wanted to be really vocal about it okay i didn't really like that and i was very uncomfortable with it so be it so it came my turn 
Now, in between times, the phone is ringing, people coming in and out. She charged $20 cash, obviously. No bank cards, didn't have them. Um, well, we had them, but she didn't take it. Um, she was unable to, to accept that. She told me a lot of the same things that that other reader did in Florida, the, the older lady. And she t told me a lot about... Uh, one thing was the Ten of Clubs is a lump sum of money, and she told me that it was government money. I didn't think a thing about it. I'm thinking, how would I be entitled to any government money? And it's one of those things you just kind of put in the back of your mind. And she was going on and, t and telling things and blah, blah, blah. Well, then she looks at me and she said, I just want to know, want you to know that your mother is going to die. Now, I, I fell back in my chair. Now, my mother had been ill with cirrhosis of the liver for a long time and never drank a drop. It was caused by a hepatitis type B that went on too long. Mama was too afraid to go to the doctor, so she didn't go. Not that maybe they could have done anything. I don't know. There's more things now you can do for cirrhosis. But back then, it was in, it was treacherous. But she was not to that point where it was going to be fatal. So she, um, I think this was in 1992, 93, she was, um, she told me that she was going to pass away within six months. Uh, she told me, <clears throat> pardon me, all these other things. And the only thing that I could hear was that she told me that my mother was going to pass away. Now, as a rule, if you ask me, to me, that's a God thing. I do, that's not my privilege to know. I Sometimes I can see if someone's energy is not as high. But, you know, anything can happen. Healings happen. Miracles happen. It's not for me to say that you have someone that is going to pass away or that they are going to die or whatever. And that I could not hardly hold the tears back. That's all I heard. And there were some other people that were in the room that, I guess, watched me. And, I mean, you could just see the sorry looks on their face from her telling me that. And there were a couple of women that got up and left when that happened. I didn't understand that then, but I certainly do now because you don't want to hear that sort of thing. You're not there for that. And so anyway... That's all I heard, other than the government money. So I that was in Knoxville. My mother lived in Gatlinburg. So I drove to Gatlinburg, and when I saw her, I burst into tears. It was that emotional and that horrific for me, and I just felt so horrible. And she, said, she looked at me and said, So, my gosh, what's going on? And I said, Oh, Mom, I've just missed you so much. And I never did tell her because I don't think that would have been fair. She would have been focused on that. And I certainly don't believe that it's fair to ever tell anyone anything like that because you take their focus off of living and you put it onto dying. We have enough that we face daily without adding that pressure and anxiety to someone else. I, I don't believe in that. And it certainly did for me. I didn't want to leave her. I had to go back down to Florida. I didn't want to leave her. But I did. And my mother did not pass away in six months. This was in 1992. My mother did pass away in 94. So 27 years ago, December. But it, it was a real hard pill for me to swallow. And I never went back to her. Uh, over the years, I'm sure she passed away. There was, she was no longer there. Um, and, and that was it. So, but I think she was good otherwise. And by the way, the government money, 
Well, I had worked for the government a few years earlier. I got a letter from them that basically said that they owed me money and that uh, since I was no longer with them, that they wanted to send the check to me and I had my uh, lawyer receive it on my behalf. And so that did that part did come to pass. So, but because of that, that kind of ruined that for me. I had been to her twice, and that was it. The most interesting thing that I really loved about my readings from the lady in Florida was that she gave me this little slogan, and I use it to this day. I've printed it on my business cards and put it on the website. If you go to www.psychicsecrets.com, you will see under my bio that it says, Zelda will reveal the past, unfold the present, and continuously predict the future. And this lady gave me that. I just thought it was so cool. And I've used that. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But now we're going to take a break. And I've saved a really, really good story for the last. So stay tuned for this very important message. Will you please? Hi, everyone. This is your friend Zelda Kelly. And I would like to take a minute to invite you to stop over to Psychic Secrets. That's www.psychicsecrets.com. There, you can find an advisor that can help you with advice, direction, and guidance that you need. And also, you can read our blog, which has a lot of really, really good little articles and information and can actually answer some questions for you. You can find us here on this same site, this Secrets Mystery Manor. We are there. Huh, so you're there already if you found us. But we also have another section, which is the Secrets Laws of Attraction. We have some wonderful videos up, and we would love to have you stop by and take a look at that. Now, I want you to know that Secrets really is here for helping the person. We have qualified, experienced advisors on call 24-7. We have the ability to chat. We have the ability to take a call and actually even a video call if you feel so inclined. So stop on by to PsychicSecrets.com. That's www.PsychicSecrets. That's two S's in the middle now. PsychicSecrets.com. And take advantage of our first-time offer. For those of you who have never called before, first-time customer, we have an offering of 30 minutes for $30. You know, we can get a lot accomplished in 30 minutes. I'm so glad that you stopped by today to listen to Secrets Mystery Manor. And I hope you take the invitation to come on over and check out our advisors. We're here for you. So thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you soon. And you'll see me on there. I'm Extension 11. So back to our podcast. Bye for now. Okay, and we're back. Thank you so much for allowing me to pause to bring that special announcement to you. So the last little tidbit, I guess, I want to share with you is something that my grandmother told me when I was 16. Now, I'm going to tell you, my grandma was probably one of the best card reader, clairvoyant, intuitive people, and she took no guff or no bull off of anyone. I learned from her. That doesn't mean that I'm just as good. I wish she were here today. She could look at you and read you up and down and tell you what direction that you were going, and sometimes in a very frightening way. <laughs> but she was very talented like that. But when I was 16, my mother, and this is after we left the farm. Now, my farm, and you can hear about that if you pop on over to www.psychicsecrets. 
dot com and you listen to a previous episode of my farm and me telling about the haunting of the house that we lived in. Um, when my parents got divorced, my mother and I moved away from the farm. My grandparents happened to get divorced at this almost the same time, that same year, and so my grandmother and my mom and I stayed together. We were kind of like the three musketeers. We we just were really close when it came to a lot of these things. And so we were going to go to a wrestling match this one Saturday night. Actually, it was a Friday night. It We could not wait. It was being held at the armory in our little town there. I don't even really know who was wrestling at the time. It they said it was wrestling. <laughs> Whatever it was, I liked it. We had a lot of fun, and Mom and Grandma and I used to go quite a bit. But before we did, we're just kind of looking in the kitchen, and Grandma had got her mail, and we're looking through the Sears catalog. Now, the Sears catalog, many of you remember, for a lot of us, that was like our wish. That was the catalog to the universe. <laughs> we had to look through the Sears catalog to look for toys for Christmas and clothing and whatever else. Obviously, we had stores we could go to, but ordering it from the Sears catalog was quite the treat. So we were looking through the Sears catalog, and I said, Grandma, I sure wish I could meet somebody. I want another boyfriend. She said, oh, you're going to meet someone all right. I said, really? She said, I don't think he's going to be your boyfriend, but you're going to meet him. And I said, really? I said, what is he going to look like? She said, hand me that catalog. So we're flipping through the catalog in the men's department. And she comes to this page, and she points her finger right down at this one young man. Now, he was cute, nice looking, and he had one of these tan trench coats. He had business attire on. He had the tan trench coat on. He was really, really cute. Had the little attache case, you know, you know the type, ladies, you know. And so I was like, wow, he's cute. And she said, yes, he is. And she said, and you're going to meet him really, really soon. I said, well, yeah, but where would I meet a man like this? I guess I sounded like my clients do now, right? <laughs> Zelda, where am I going to meet this guy? Okay, so he was there in this catalog, and I thought, wow, that'd be honest. And, and she was like, she was adamant. I knew she was serious. This was not a joke. So we just kind of forgot about it, laughed it off, and we got ready. We went to the armory that night, and we're sitting there. All of a sudden, my mom... I was sitting in front of my mom and my grandmother on the, in the bleachers. My mom nudges me in the back and kind of points to the door to get into the gymnasium part of it. I look, and there was my man that was in the catalog. And no kidding, I will never forget that. I My mouth must have been open. I couldn't believe it. And I don't mean open in talking, I mean open in disbelief. <laughs> and you could see he was looking all around the room, and then he saw me. And he came, he looked at me and smiled, and he walked right over. And my grandmother leaned down, whispered in my ear, I told you so. And I said, yes, you did. And there he came up, sat down beside me on the bleachers, asked me my name. I asked him his. I wish I could remember it. I would call him now. <laughs> and and um, told me that he was driving from Columbus to Cleveland and that he sold data processing. Now, I had no unearthly idea what data processing was. And obviously, he was a little older than I was. But, oh, he was cute. And we sat there and talked for a long time. And I said, 
well, this is kind of out of your way. What brought you here? And he said, you know, i got to tell you this. I don't even know. He said, I was listening to the radio, and I heard that this was, this event was happening tonight, and I just felt my car driving here, and I just came. And he said, I'm so glad that I did, because I was able to see you, and I'm like, holy mackerel. I mean, I talk about having a deer in the headlight look. And my grandmother and my mom just kind of sat there with their hands over their mouth, trying not to laugh. And I did not know what to say. Finally, we, you know, he bought my mom and my grandmother, went down to the concession stand, bought us drinks, came back up. And by the way, by the way, he had on the tan trench coat and a suit and was carrying an attache case. Yes. Yes, you heard me correctly. So, oh, that just flipped me out a little bit. But that's how good Grandma was. And when it came time to leave, he hugged me and he said, it was so nice meeting you. And I said, wow, it was nice meeting you too. And when he walked, it was one of these, I'm going to say, romantic movie moments where he went down off the bleachers and I just stood there not knowing and I just watched him and when he got to the door he turned right around and looked at me and smiled and waved. Now I didn't know him from Adam. He gave me his name at the time and I gave him mine. We didn't write down anything. I have no clue. He could be gone by now. I have no idea where he went. But all I know is that my grandma was right. And that flipped me out. I'm telling you, that was just one of the miraculous readings that she had given me over the years. And I wanted to share that with you. But those are my little experiences. Now that we're getting ready to go into 2022, I didn't want to make it any spookier or scarier or creepier than this past year was, right? (laughs) So I just wanted to share those little moments that I had. I loved it. And I got to tell you, I appreciate you stopping by. But before we leave, before we end this episode, I want to invite you over to Facebook. And you can find me there in a Facebook group called House of Psychic Zelda. It is a public group. I do have a private one. You're welcome to come to either one. We're growing our group. When we talk about psychic phenomenon, we talk about the metaphysical and the paranormal And our host for this, our sponsor for this episode, Psychic Secrets, will always give me little deals for little minutes off, or you get free minutes, or, and I'll tell you the most important thing is, once again, if you're a new caller to Psychic Secrets, you get 30 minutes for $1 per minute, and we, I'll tell you, We can really accomplish a lot, like the ad said. So stop on by, say hello, tell me that you listened to this. I'd sure love to hear from you. And before we go, I want to wish you the very, very best to you and your family for a wonderful, very prosperous, healthy, wealthy, and wise 2022 Can you believe that we're actually saying that? 2022. We love having you here with us. And thank you so much for allowing me to share this. And you be brave, you be blessed, and you be well. And you be back. Stop back again. And we'll see you very soon. And I'll talk to you later. I guess next year. (laughs) Bye for now. Until next time, thanks so much for listening. I just love this, don't you?